guys want to hear something really embarrassing? So I am so antisocial. I am such a homebody that I went out and socialized last night and I woke up with a hoarse voice. <laughs> what the heck? So um, I will be sipping on this tea to try and soothe my throat, my pathetic little throat. Anyways, today I am going to turn a TikTok trend into a YouTube video and I'm going to be de-influencing you from some very popular items that you might be seeing a lot that I think you maybe shouldn't waste your money on. Now, I can proudly say I've been de-influencing you all for a very long time now. I post a ton of what not to buy slash de-influencing videos just with a fancy name tag on it now. Uh, but de-influencing is great. I have so many of you guys telling me how you are slowing down on purchasing makeup. You want to save money. So this is the video for you because I get it. While I can proudly say that I do a lot of de-influencing videos anyways. I also do a lot of videos that might influence you to purchase things. When I love things, I love things. So if you're wanting to save money, this is the video for you. If you've watched all of my videos, I've talked about these in passing not being worth it or have videos on how I don't like these, but I thought it would be cute to wrap up this de-influencing content in a nice little package in one video. So let's go ahead and get into it. Also, I mostly chose very talked about and popular products. So I'm going to assume that they're so talked about and loved for a reason. So just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you. Actually, just kidding. This is a de-influencing video. Save your mind, okay? We're going to stay true to the concept. I'm trying to be nice, but this is for those of you that want to save money. So first, let's talk primers. I picked out the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, but I'm categorizing this into sticky primers because I have to ask myself, does the stickiness really make make a blast longer? I question that. I have said that I think it does, and sometimes when I wear this, I think it does make my makeup last longer, but then I'm honestly still not too entirely sure. Is it just the foundation or the powder that I'm wearing that makes the makeup last longer? I just have had inconsistent results with a grippy primer. And what I don't like about a grippy primer is that my makeup legit like just sticks to it sometimes and I can't blend the makeup out. So does a grippy primer actually work? I've seen some of you say that it does. I've seen some of you say that it doesn't. And from my experience, I still don't know. And they are so popular and so many brands continue to come out with grippy primers. And when I want my makeup to last longer, I'll put on a grippy primer in case it works. But I don't know that the results are exactly noticeable. It depends on what your skin needs. Like, I have dry skin, so for a primer, what works for me the best is something hydrating. For oily skin, I recommend like an oil control kind of primer. I'm just not sure that I buy it. So that's why I'm putting this as something I want to de-influence you from purchasing, because I just don't know. I feel like I've definitely said in passing that, you know, I'm using this grippy primer because it makes your makeup last longer. But does it? Is this proven? I like a lot of times will go off your guys' words who say, yes, this makes my makeup last longer. Like, ugh. And it just, it feels unpleasant to put on. Like now my fingers are sticky. My face is sticky. I'm going to give this a couple minutes to dry down so that dust particles don't stick to my face and I can blend my foundation out. But I'm not saying this is a bad product, but what I'm asking, is it a good product? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure. Okay, foundation. I was this close to talking about this product, which I guess I am talking about it anyways, but I almost like did a whole feature on the Danessa Myricks yummy skin thing because this looks horrible and drying on me but i've had a lot of you with oily skin tell me that this product was an absolute game changer so i'm gonna respect you and i'm gonna talk about a different foundation that i don't like at all <laughs> that is very very trendy i see so many people like it this is the charlotte tilbury beautiful skin foundation this does not give me beautiful skin let me show you i think we're getting over it but last year the super trendy thing with foundations was to have skincare infused ingredients and to be really glowy. And you know what happens when the foundation has skincare infused ingredients and is really glowy? Texture. Texture, oiliness. 
I, ugh, it made my skin look so horrible. I just look, my skin looks so textured with all of the new foundations last year with all of the skincare infused ingredients. I've decided like, yes, in theory, as somebody who has drier skin, a glowier foundation sounds great. But honestly, no, I like a semi-matte or like a natural finish foundation because I'd rather have my face looking smooth. I will hydrate properly and I don't want the foundation to show any pores because the truth of the matter is, if you have pores, the glowiness is going to highlight that. That's just the theory of makeup, that's how it works. Nothing wrong with it, but if you have pores and texture and dry patches, the glowiness has the opposite effect that you want it to have for your skin. So anyways, some people love this foundation, some people hate this foundation. I think it looks really thick on my skin as well. I almost feel like the skin type that this foundation works for best is young skin with no pores, like perfect skin to begin with, which in that case, you don't even really need foundation, right? So anyways, when I put this foundation on, like by itself, I feel like my skin does look better just because everything is evened out. But then after that, I'll go on and put a foundation that I actually really like and that actually improves the texture of my skin. And I realize how not cute and how thick this foundation looks. A great thing to look for when it comes to foundation, I think, is, you know, how does it work with your skin as well. You want the foundation to kind of sink into the skin as opposed to sit on top of the skin to where you can see the actual product on the skin and it's makeup. You're going to see the makeup, but this one just sits heavier and thicker than a lot of the other foundations on the market. Overall, I'm completely bashing this. <laughs> I just, I don't like it. I think it was overhyped and Charlotte Tilbury as a brand has so many better products to offer. And honestly, foundation really isn't the category that I would recommend from Charlotte Tilbury. But I mean, oh, it's just so thick. You can see every pore does not, does not work for me. I mean, I feel like the proof right here is just in the demo itself. It's not, it's not looking good. Okay, concealer, everybody has been obsessed with the results with this Rem Beauty concealer. I think on the face, like on the skin itself, not the under eye areas, this looks really nice. It's a great spot concealer. On the under eyes, she thick and she emphasizes texture and she ages me. So I guess we're gonna celebrate that by putting it on my under eyes. <laughs> but no, really, it does have kind of a thicker feel to it, which I think has a lot of coverage on any acne spots you might have on the face, but it really carries a lot of dryness on the under eyes, and it's just too thick for such a delicate area of the eye. I'm gonna use this Jaclyn Cosmetics brush to blend it out. Like, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna turn the lights down. So you can really see, first of all, the foundation looks terrible and it just looks dry, does it not? Now, I feel like sometimes when I put the lighting down this low, it really does not look this bad <laughs> in person, but it really does give you a good idea as to how this product sits on the under eyes. And I just have so many other concealers in my collection that look much smoother and lighter and thinner and quite frankly more flattering than this. So I think I've de-influenced you on this, right? Right. <laughs> now, one thing that is really popular in eye-catching and gets views on TikTok are instant transformations. So a lot of videos try to get you to buy the product by showing this is what I look like before, they pop the product on and boom, magical difference. And that is what I was seeing a lot from this Revlon Photo Ready Blurring Powder. And I bought this before I saw this on TikTok, right? And the results that were happening on TikTok were not happening to me. So <laughs> everybody was putting this on their face and all of their pores magically disappeared. I'm here to tell you that did not happen to me. So let me show you. And I'll even use the technique that these girls are using. Now, it's not a bad powder. I don't want you to think that, but it's not going to give you magical results. And it's gonna look really good at first, but it, it feel like the blurriness disappears in a few minutes. So I'm gonna pop this 
on the under eyes. So this is the magic that you're seeing. And even then, it's not as blurring as all of the TikTok videos are showing, but it does give a little blur. The thing about this powder is in literally five minutes, I find that the blurriness goes away. It does not last. It's the oddest thing. So even though it looks good now, it won't by the end of the video. I mean, it will look fine, but it's not going to be as blurring as it looks now. It doesn't hold it up for whatever reason, because honestly, my skin looks very good now, and I'm, I've never thought that this was a bad powder, but it's not magical like I feel like a lot of videos show. So just keep that in mind. This one I feel a little guilty for because I have recommended this product in the past because at the time it was the best of its time. And that was the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. I mean, this is one of the best-selling makeup products. It has to be of the market right now. And it is a very nice product, but the longer that it's been popular, the more that other brands have kind of created their own version of this. And I think they've done it better. So I just feel like this is quite pricey when you can get a better product for less money. And yes, while I've recommended this in the past, I find that the more products that come out like this, the less I am reaching for this. So mine is all, ew, okay? I don't like the packaging, especially after you've had it for a while. Mine is probably expired at this point. I don't really use it that often, uh, but I have to make sure I mix up the formula in here. I am gonna have to buy another one, not because I feel like this is a superior product and that I need to have in my collection, it's just it's such a popular makeup product that for videos like these, I like to have the popular products. But no, I'm here to tell you, you don't need to have this. I have a lot of other products in my collection that I reach for over this one. First of all, I love a good cream bronzer. I think cream bronzer is better than this in general. I'm reaching for my cream bronzers more over this. Tarte just came out with a product if you like this packaging that I think has a better formula. But I want to give this credit where credit is due. This is the first product of its kind to work as good as this does, to blend out so easily. But now there's competitors and I kind of like the competitors a little bit more. And I don't want that to take away from this product because I think this product is very nice. And I have recommended this in the past because it does work great. Look at this color, but it's not as special as it used to be. You don't need to pay the Charlotte Tilbury price to get your hands on a product like this, which is why I'm putting it in this video. Back in the day, like a year or two ago, yes, it was worth spending the money for such a nice blending lightweight liquid contour. But now, a year later, it's just not as special anymore. It's not as worth the money. Okay, this next one, I truly just do not understand the hype on the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blushes. I like the original putty blushes, but the Luminous one, I feel like, can look a little glittery on my cheek. And also, it just applies patchy for some reason on me. These are affordable, and you can get these to work, but they are a bit of a finicky product. I just don't think they're worth the hype. I've never said that this product itself was bad, but I've always thought when I use these, I just don't think they're all that. There are better cream and liquid blushes out on the market, and these are one of the most affordable ones, and I have to give them credit for that. But still, I'd rather pay a little bit extra for a product that is a lot better, you know? Like Flower Beauty, it's not a cream blush, but Flower Beauty has a liquid blush formula that I love, as well as Honest Beauty has a beautiful cream formulation. I just don't think that this one is the best. The non-luminous formula from e.l.f. is much better, and it's a great gateway into trying cream blushes, but everybody's been enjoying these luminous ones, and I think the luminous ones are worse. So here's how it looks on the cheek. I find the luminosity to not be natural looking at all. It looks like they just put some glitters in there. It doesn't look flattering on the cheek. So yeah, I've just never really enjoyed these. Also, these have been very trendy of late, and I just don't think they're anything special. The Too Faced blurring blushes, I don't find them to be particularly blurring. I don't find them to be the most blendable formula. Again, they're not bad. But they really aren't good either, and they're Too Faced, so they're a more high-end brand, more high-end price. And while the colors are pretty, 
there's a lot of better blushes that you can literally get from the drugstore if you're trying to save money. And a color that's been so popular is Candy Clouds, which is like this blue-based pink. Just in general, I think this color is fun, but I don't always think it's the most flattering. And this one in particular, I feel like I kind of struggle to get this look flattering on me. I'm just going to pop a little bit on the apple of my cheeks, but it does not always look great, especially when it's over applied. Now that totally depends on your skin tone, but everybody's acting like this is the best shade in the world. And I think it's a really fun shade and it can be done well. Like I love the Dior one, but I don't know. The more that brands come out with these blue based pink, the more that I kind of don't like it as much. I just feel like it's not super flattering on my skin tone anymore. Maybe it's just not the vibe I'm looking for anymore. But anyways, the blush itself, it's a fine blush. I just think it's overhyped. And then finally, um, if you're a Selena Gomez fan, I'm sorry, spare me on this one. <laughs> the Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizers, I've never been a fan of. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of liquid luminizers to begin with, so Take that review with a grain of salt, right? But I just think that these are not impactful enough. When it comes to liquid highlights, I feel like they should be a little bit more luminizing because they're in a liquid format. And this one just kind of disappears to the point where I'm like, I, I would have rather just put a powder highlight on. So I think these are definitely overhyped. The blushes are great, but the, the highlights, I mean, I think the blushes are kind of overhyped too, but they're still really good. I can see why people like it. This one, I just, hmm. I feel like my skin literally soaks up this formulation. It's the oddest thing. I mean, it's really natural. <laughs> so if you like a natural liquid highlight, go for it. But when it comes to liquid highlights, I always, after I use them, I just feel like <laughs> I would have rather have used a powder highlight because there's less risk involved. I feel like powder highlights blend more seamlessly into the skin as well. I feel like a lot of times liquid luminizers and such kind of sit on top of my skin and they emphasize texture. Like this is not flattering. Like texture does not look good. I will say it's popping a little bit more than normal today. It's making a liar out of me. I don't know, it looks kind of pretty. Not the most flattering on my texture and whatnot. But over time, this luminization is just gonna disappear. It's weird, it's very weird. I'm not a big liquid luminizer fan, but I have still tried a lot of better ones, so yeah. Okay, eyebrows. The NYX, the brow glue, and they even like came out with tints of this now, it was so popular. But this little brow glue is not a glue at all for my eyebrows. Now, I have very unruly eyebrows that don't seem to ever want to go in the direction that I want them to go. But people are like, this is like glue. But it's not. My eyebrows fall. If your eyebrows stand straight with this or go wherever you want them to go, then your eyebrows are better behaving than mine. Mine are badly behaved, so. But I'm going to use it today to show you. I love the cute little packaging though, I can't lie. I'm going to make the brows a little fluffier than I would normally choose to leave the house just so that you can see them fall. Like I have no worries at all that my eyebrows are going to stick up towards the sky and that I'm going to look electrocuted by the end of this because my brows like fall with this. It's very, very weird. So we're going to start off like this. I want to look like a crazy person and... Don't make a liar out of me because I have used you many times and you haven't worked. If this chooses to work today, I'm quitting. Let's work on eyeshadow now and ooh, uh, I feel like this is going to be very sensitive for some people. Makeup by Mario has this Master Matte eyeshadow palette, which is fine. It's a good palette. I see why a lot of people love it. But Vizzy Art has a palette that has these colors that is 10 times better in quality. And now Viseart has actually redone their packaging and prices in that they've taken their original, it was an $80 palette that had these colors and they've taken less product and have literally halved the price. So I think the Viseart is now even cheaper and much better quality. I just always thought that this was like mediocre quality when you could get Vizzy Art Shadows for such a better price. And like I said, it's it's fine. But these are such essential colors that I would want the highest of high quality. And the Master Mats just doesn't give it to me. 
I don't know. I feel like I do feel bad saying that because the makeup by Mario, it's a nice palette. It's fine quality. It's very handy. It's easy to get a hold of. I see why people love it, but this is a PSA. Get the Viseart one. It is so much better. And if you're new to Viseart, you've never tried Viseart, Viseart is a staple brand in so many makeup artist kits because it's professional quality. It's so nice. Professional gray. Anyways, I'm about to do just the most basic look with this. I will say I have been vibing with all matte looks lately. So I'm going to take this cream shade and I'm going to pop this underneath the eye brow <laughs> the eyebrow and then I'm going to take these two shades and one thing I do love about this palette is you can mix and match however you want I'm sure some of the shades are redundant but honestly not though because you just never know what you're gonna need but I see why so many people love this and I feel like you know what I'm sad about eyeshadow is just not what it used to be back in the day eyeshadow palettes aren't super trending right now. A lot of the makeup looks are about the skin and not the eyes. So that does make me sad, but I do like a good matte look. Okay, I'm just gonna fast forward through me doing the rest of this look because I am not doing anything groundbreaking, but just know, while yes, these shadows are good, Viseart does it better. And I just will never get over that. Okay, yeah, like this dark brown, doesn't hold a candle to Viseart's dark brown. Now listen, even though I'm like, I don't wanna say talking trash, but even though I'm coming at this palette, the newest makeup by Mario palette that just came out, now that's the business. I feel like he improved the formula on that one. I think it has a very special formula, but when this one came out from the jump, I've just always been like, gets the job done, but not with ease. Like this dark brown needs to blend faster. That being said though, love this all matte look. It looks really, really nice. So for eyeliners, now I think a lot of people tried these and didn't like these, so I don't think that these are overhyped, but just in case, everybody talks about the Essence Lash Princess mascaras, which are phenomenal, worth every little bit of hype that they get. And this past year, they launched Princess Liners. These are not, these don't hold a candle to the mascaras. Don't buy these. Let me just pop one on. First of all, the applicator, it's quite rough. It's so big, I have trouble with control. And second of all, do you see how not black that is? This does not give nearly enough pigment at all. It's not black enough. It like doesn't have enough ink in there. Yeah, but I will say this one, people tried it and they were like, what the heck? So it isn't an overhyped product. I just saw it and remembered how I didn't like it. And I wanted to remind you not to be tricked by the Lash Princess line because the Princess Liner is not very good. Why did, look at that, that's terrible. You guys wanna hear something funny? I'm like looking at the liquid highlight and I'm really liking it. <laughs> I feel like I lied to you, it looks good, what the heck? It's still not the best though, so don't buy it still. This is a de-influencing video. Wait, oh my gosh, that gave me so much trouble. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, let me fix this, I'll be right back. Okay, mascara. <laughs> this guy right here, I actually did a little video on it and I told you guys that I liked it, but I actually have an update for you. So this is the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara that went absolutely viral everywhere and I have the tea for you. So I really like the paddle brush that it has for my upper lashes but honestly this mascara is really hard to apply on my small lower lashes and I like the mascara when I apply it. I think it makes my lashes look really thick. It's a really good mascara on application but wear time for me, it smudges like crazy because I have lashes that go straight down so they touch my skin and it smudges everywhere. So it always makes my makeup look a hot mess at the end of the day. So I just don't love it. 
as much anymore for obvious reasons, but it does make my lashes look really nice. It's just a matter of, one, I don't like it on my lower lashes because the applicator is kind of difficult and spiky down there. And then two, it's not cute if it's going to smudge at the end of the day and I'm going to look like a raccoon. So unfortunately, this one didn't work out for me, but I do love the way that it makes my lashes look upon application. But where is everything? And this just doesn't have that factor for me. Let's give the mascara a second to dry down before I clean it up. But let's talk lips. And oh, I have the whole line of the Rare Beauty lips. But I just don't find that these have the longevity that I'm looking for. I think the products upon application, it's kind of like the mascara, is really nice. But then I just find them to like kind of just fade away. So I'm gonna use the lip liner in the shade Gifted, which this is a darker liner, so the application on this is going to be really nice. Uh, but honestly, it's just not a formula that I prefer. It kind of gives like a blurred edge for lip liner. I like something a little bit more precise. It's just not a favorite formula of mine. And then the lipsticks themselves, I find, really don't last. Now, with the help of the lip liner, I think it's fine. And I like how... Ay, ay, ay. I just dropped everything. Now, the lipsticks, I think, are a good formulation. But again, I just don't find they have that lasting power. I'm putting on the shade Lively. And the colors that Selena has in this line are so beautiful i love the colors but see it just it's not the most flattering on my lip texture it's gonna fade pretty quickly maybe not with this lip liner it'll be okay but there's lipsticks at the drugstore that i prefer over these and then lastly the product that i wanted to de-influence you guys the last one are these elf lip stains the colors look like they are going to be gorgeous right every single one of these pulls very red on my lips so this one is named pinkies up so we think it would be like a pinky color but the stain it leaves behind is super duper dark and cherry red this one is power mauve so you think it's going to be really mauvey but again you can even see on my hand how red it is and bright and then the last one is basic beige this is not a basic beige, so every time I wear these, I am bamboozled by the color that I see on the packaging, and it just looks very vibrant on my lips. And I oftentimes go for more of a neutral look, and these will mess up my lips and give me a very bold lip, which is not what I'm looking for based on the names. They do leave a good stain behind, though. That is with a makeup wipe. Anyways, you guys. Those are very viral products that I see a lot of people using that I wanted to de-influence you on. And keep in mind, this video was made for people who want to save money. There are absolutely silver linings to these products. <laughs> for some reason, the liquid luminizer wanted to work today, but I did want to show you my eyebrows have like completely fallen, by the way. So, told you this didn't work. It doesn't necessarily mean all of these products are bad. These are ones that I personally just wouldn't recommend that you spend your money on if you were to personally ask me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If there's any other products you want to de-influence others on, comment down below. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.